In my last video I showed you that my Ioptron Sam 40 mount had an issue with its power switch. Although a mundane issue, the mount was still under warranty and as such I contacted the shop and arranged to go there for a repair. They suggested to simply replace the circuit board which houses the switch with one of the Sam 40s they had on stock so I could go back home with a working mount. It turned out to be a little bit more complicated. In this video I will show that the SEM40 has gone through quite some changes since its release in 2019. My broken mount is one of the earlier models and the shop however only had the newest model. And this made the plan of just replacing the circuit board an impossible option. These changes have been done with good intent. Some of them uh, have some consequences that might be unexpected. So let's dive into the differences between those SEM40s that seem to be out there and let's focus on the differences and what they mean to the end user. I'll also take the opportunity to give a little history on the SEM mounts. This video will be split into chapters, so feel free to skip to ahead to a section of interest. I am Martin Schumacher and I call myself Koplamp on this channel. If you are new here on my channel, welcome. And if you are a returning visitor, thanks for your support. Ioptron introduced a very different mount build as opposed to the competitors. They started this with the ZEQ series and they later renamed this to SEM, the Center Balanced Equatorial Mount. This design makes it possible to achieve a very good ratio between the capacity of the mount and the weight of the mount itself. The SEM build has its counterweight shaft in a 90 degrees angle to the RA axis instead of the classical build which has it mounted on the deck axis. This makes that for a SEM mount the center of gravity is much better oriented and puts much less strain on the mount. Although my SEM 25P could hold 12 kilos, for astrophotography it is for most mounts advised to not exceed half of the specified capacity. For most mounts. SEM mounts, however, can be stressed a little bit more before tracking becomes problematic. 75% of the capacity should be possible without issues. My telescope then was a C8 and together with a guide scope all in all weighed around 9 to 10 kilos and that's a tad bit above the optimum capacity. So when the opportunity arose in the form of somebody offering me good money for my SEM 25P I decided to take the leap and buy a SEM 40. For a short time I had both these mounts side to side so this proved to be a good opportunity to see the differences between the SEM40 and its little brother. The SEM40 is truly a bigger brother to the SEM25B. It can hold 18 kilos, which means that with, with that 70% rule, I have room to spare with my 10 kilograms setup. There are some small changes, which I once detailed on the Dutch website astroforum.nl. My first observation is that a telescope mounted on the dovetail saddle is positioned closer to the central axis of the mount tripod when mounted on the SEM 25P. The SEM 25P therefore really needs a mini pier extension in my opinion. Else you would have the end of your telescope, which is usually the expensive camera, hit a tripod lag. The build of the SEM 40 however makes this much less of an issue. Nevertheless, in the end, I ended buying a mini pier for my SEM40 as well. Another striking difference is that the altitude adjustment knob on the SEM40 is a lot sturdier than the one on the 25. See my finger for scale. 
The SEM40 knob is also equipped with holes that allow you to use the provided Allen key to use as a lever, giving you even more precise control. The azimuth bolts also have had some changes applied. The bolt itself is increased in size on the SEM40 and I do think that they could have better kept the more knurled knob that was used on the 25. The SEM40 is somewhat hard to turn. Strangely enough, on my SEM40 the knobs on the deck plate, on the uh, dovetail saddle, are much smaller than those on the 25. This again proves to be hard to tighten or loosen and this can even be painful so I ended up using a correctly sized allen key because the one in the mount is too small and I could put it into the knobs to help um, tighten or loosen the telescope. The deck plate itself has undergone quite some changes as well which now can hold both Lasmandi and Fixum dovetails. Also the internal wiring of the SEM40 allows for some connections to be available on the deck plate as well. The SEM25P went to a new user and I was a very pleased user of the SEM40 using both my telescopes on it. Until the power switch decided to stop switching. Or worse, switch whenever it felt like it. The mount went back to the shop as it was still under warranty. I was offered to bring home a mount which I could loan from the shop until my SEM40 would be repaired but I opted to buy a second SEM40 instead because I wanted to be able to have both my scopes at the same time in my garden on a clear night. Since its initial release in February of 2019, the SEM40 has had quite some iteration happen. So let's go over them one by one. The location of the connections for instance. On the 2019 model, the side of the RA shaft houses most of the connections. On one side, it has the on and off switch, a 12 volt 5 amps power input, which has by the way a 5.5 mm by 2.1 mm plug, as well as the port for the handbox is on that side. On the other side, it has an iPort used for the GPS dongle and a USB port for controlling the mount by a computer. This is a dedicated port for this purpose. And I'll get back to this uh, specific fact later on. On the end of the RAA axis, it has two USB-B ports. One is dedicated for the iPolar and the other is used for routing USB to the dovetail saddle. Speaking of which, the dovetail saddle has a cable management panel, which is mounted on the south side by default. But if you choose to, you can move it to the north side, which I ended up doing. The connections are a USB-A port, a 12 volt 5 amps um, input or output actually, and a ST4 guider port. The saddle itself is called the Ioptron Universal Saddle, which can support both Fixen and Losmandi dovetails. You will however have to use some tooling before you can switch from Fixen to Losmandi and vice versa. This version of the SEM40 also has an optional encoder added. So it could increase its tracking accuracy from less than uh, about 7 arc seconds to less than 0.25 arc seconds. Quite an increase in accuracy. In August of 2020, Ioptron released the SEM40G. And the mount increased in weight. So from 7.2 kilograms, it now weighs 7.9 kilograms. And it now has a bigger diameter counterweight shaft. 28 millimeters instead of the 20 millimeters of the SEM 25P and the SEM 40 older model. Um, it also has its connections moved around a bit. The 12 volt power input in a diameter has changed as well, so it is now not a plug with 2.1 millimeters but 2.5 millimeters, which means that you cannot use the power plug from a 2090 SIM40 on a 2020 SIM40. The sides of the RA shaft now only host the handbox port on one side and the I port for the GPS on the other. Both the on and off switch and the power input have been moved to the end of the RA shaft. There now is only one USB B port and it is used for both the iPolar as well as controlling the mount with the computer. 
Another change is that the dovetail saddle now also houses a guide scope. Even normal SAM 40s released in 2020 will have this new dovetail saddle, but then with the guide scope housing empty. The dovetail saddle now is wider, and as such, it now has bigger knobs to tighten the saddle around the Vixen or Los Mandy style dovetails. It now also no longer requires tooling to switch from one to the other. The Vixen dovetail lies a bit deeper in the saddle and this might require some extra spaces in case you are using an autofocuser on your telescope. On the south side of the saddle you get one USB-A port and two 12 volt power outputs with a total of three amps and these plugs have the more common 5.5 mm by 2.1 mm in a diameter form factor. On the north side we will find the ST4 guiding port. In April of 2021 Iotron released yet another SEM40. This time it is a specialized variant that can have an Intel NUC NUC mounted on the north side of the dovetail saddle. The RA shaft and now sees a local area network port added to it, as well as a 19 volt power input, which is routed to the side of the dovetail saddle. So you can now power the NUC from there. This way you don't end up with dangling cables that have a danger of snagging around things while slewing, for instance. And a second 12 volt power input is added, which is routed to three outlets on the dovetail saddle. These allow for a total current of 5 amps. And then there is the mount power input which still also routes to 2 12 volt power outputs on the dovetail saddle, but max out on 3 amps total. The dovetail saddle itself is completely different on the NUC model. On the side with the tightening knobs you will find 2 times 12 volt outputs powered by the default mount power input, as well as two USB 2A ports. Lastly, a USB B input is found there to control the mount with the NUC. The other side of the saddle houses the local area network port coming from the RA shaft base, as well as the 19 volt power output to power the NUC device. The south side of the saddle has a ST4 guide port as well as 3 times 12 volt 5 amp power outputs. A last addition to this model is easily overlooked and it comes in the form of an attachment point for another new accessory in the IOPTRON ecosystem. It is called a Z-axis counterweight. IOPTRON then also started shipping normal SAM40s with a dedicated dovetail saddle. That SAM40 has the same RA shaft inputs as the SAM40G from the year before, but the dovetail saddle has seen a few changes applied to it. It no longer has an empty guide scope compartment. And just as the SAM40 NUC, it has two USB 2A ports on the saddle. This time on the south end. And this side also houses the ST4 guider port and 2 times 12 volt 3 amps outputs. The saddle also has the Z-axis counterweight attachment points. This is the SEM40 that I bought as my second mount. I already knew that this newer type of SEM40 would pose some difficulties for me as an ASI Air user. The biggest change that the SEM40 mount has is the removal of a dedicated USB port for computer control of the mount. It now uses a USB port which is shared with the iPolar. This makes communicating to the mount a little bit more cumbersome for ASI Air users. Because you can no longer directly connect the mount to one of the USB ports on the ASI Air, but you will have to connect it through a hub instead. And I don't know exactly whether or not this has to do with the shared nature of uh, the, um, the USB-B port on uh, the mount 
It could also be due to a protocol change by Iaptron, as this seems to have occurred around the same time. ZWO advises their users to connect the SAM mounts, starting with the SAM 40G through the cooled camera instead of directly to the ASI Air. Ioptron claims it is due to the kernel version that ZWO uses on their Raspberry Pi based ASI Air. My issues were further worsened by bad luck by the way. Uh, apparently the USB cable I got with my SAM40 was a subpar quality and as such I got mount exception errors all the time even though I had the mount connected through the hub in my ASI 294MC Pro. So there you have it, the SAM40 iterations up until today. Do you own a SAM40? Which version do you have? Also use the ASI Air? Then please share your experiences in the comments below. I'll also try to post the written version of this investigation on the Cloudy Nights forum. Thanks for watching and see you next time. and an ST2 guider port. ST2, ST4. Is it ST4? What is the... Doo, doo, doo. ST4. Duh.